So back in July of 2019, we caught a glimpse of this storage facility listed for sale on LoopNet. Listed for 515,000. I'm gonna show you around. I'm gonna tell you about buying this property and then I'm gonna read the numbers here so you can learn a little bit about how profitable we are. Go back here where it's a little bit quieter. But um, as you can see, it's an unmanned property, so you pull right up and um, rent online. What happens is you rent online, you get emailed a gate code and directions to your unit, and then you basically go straight to your unit. A free lock is waiting for you inside. You can see our sign back there. We got that changed when we bought the place. Um, a free lock is waiting for you inside the unit, and you're ready to go. So people rent and we rarely see any of our customers. This has 66 units. It's 11,000 square feet, pretty large units. There's the corporate unit right there. Got some other ones down that way. Here's my truck. These are 10 by 20s. Some five by 10s right here. And um, yeah, so we saw this property listed for sale, 515,000. We put in an offer for 440,000. Ran our numbers, put in an offer for 440. It was 80% full and generating about 6,000 a month in, in cash flow. And um, there's a couple of buildings, or sorry, get, generating about 6,000 a month in revenue. We'll talk about that. A couple more buildings up there. But um, yeah, our offer got declined. A month later, we sent another offer for 472,000 and it was accepted. So in October, on October 31st, Halloween, we closed on this property, October 31st, 2018, 2019, about six months ago, seven months ago, um, eight actually, shoot, we've been at operational for eight months. But um, I'm going to talk about it in here, so it's a little bit quieter, but it is hot outside, so I'm going to turn my AC on. Okay, so we paid $472,000, we had $10,000 in closing costs, and this property is located at 1261 Streets Run Road in West Mifflin, PA, which is actually only about 15 minutes from downtown Pittsburgh, which is a great spot, and we're kind of excited about the long-term value there. All right, first thing we did, it was generating about 6,000 revenue. We raised it up. We raised the rents up closer to market. They're still not at market rent. We still have to raise it up one more time, but uh, we raised the rents 20%, and um, it evened out to be about 7,500 a month now in revenue that we go into our bank account. That's not including the sales, ta that's not including the sales tax. Um, so 7,500 a month is what we see basically every month. We've had a couple $8,000 months, a couple $7,000 months. Our property taxes are $10,000 a year. Um, utilities are 200 a month. Our soft costs, or sorry, our software is $100 a month. Our bookkeeping and accounting is $200 a month. Um, our maintenance is about $250 a month. But as you can see, I do a lot of this work. I come here, um, I've been here twice, once at closing, um, one other time. And uh, in, let's see here, January, and once in now June 1st. So I've been here twice after closing and I do some work each time. I sweep out some units. I put some new locks on the floor. I went up and sealed some um, leaky spots on the roof. A tree came down over that way. I got a chainsaw and sawed it up. I picked up all the trash. I There was two units that needed to be auctioned. I took photos of those units. I locked them back up so that we can have our online auction. Um, I spent about seven hours here today. All right, so maintenance is $250 a month. That's not including my time. Uh, marketing, $250 a month. All of our marketing is on Sparefoot, um, which is an aggregator, and uh, they get a, a cut each time they bring us a new customer. So what that looks like is $90,000 a, a year in revenue and $22,000 a year in operating expenses. So 
$68,000 in net operating income. So on a purchase of uh, $472,000, we had about $10,000 in closing costs. So it's $482,000 was our all-in purchase price of this property. And in the first year, we're expected to generate about $68,000 in net operating income. And this is the best metric that I know of to measure the health of a property, which is the overall unlevered yield. Um, you can call it a cap rate. Um, you can call it, a, there's a lot of different terms in real estate for this, but it's, I like to say an unlevered yield. If you just paid cash, if we paid $482,000 cash for this property, what would be our percent return on our money um, that year, that, op that year? And it's a 14.1% unlevered yield, which is very good. We're very happy with the performance of this property so far. All right now, but the thing is we did get some debt on this one and this one we actually leveraged 80%. Um, so 80% of that purchase price was leveraged, which was 385,000 and about a hundred thousand dollars was cash that my partner and I put into the deal to buy this property. So we put in a hundred thousand dollars cash. We borrowed 385,000. So every month we pay $1,400 a month in interest and a thousand dollars a month in principal. And that comes out to over the course of a year, $16,800 in interest. And uh, we have some principal as well. Did I write that down? I did not. Anyway, um, so we got $100,000 cash in and we did 80-20 loan. The loan to value was 80% of the value of the property we got debt on and we put in 20% of the cash. It's a 20 year note, meaning the amortization schedule is scheduled so that we'll pay off the note at the 20 year mark and um, it's at 4.25% interest rate. It's actually a variable, um, it's, a, it's got a five year term on this debt service, which means at the five year mark, the interest rate changes. If the interest rate goes up, um, we're likely gonna have a balloon is what they call it sometimes. It's, a, it's a, um, an arm, an adjustable rate mortgage basically. And at the five year mark, our interest rate's gonna change, but our plan is to add enough value here, get the net operating income, income up even more, get all the rents up to market rent, and refinance, get this thing valued closer to eight hundred, eight to nine hundred thousand dollars, and refinance and pull out more debt on this property, so that we can go buy and build more storage facilities. But um, yeah, that's how we that's how we did it. So what we're looking at is a levered yield. If you count our levered yield, and and meaning w the interest is an actual expense, we're looking at fifty one thousand dollars a year instead of sixty eight thousand dollars a year in income meaning that's money that's either in cash or going towards our payment in the form of principal, which is $51,000. I call this the levered yield. $51,000 that we make every year in income on our $100,000 cash investment in this property. So we invested $100,000. Each year, we're going to make $51,000 in cash and, and equity going towards the note. 51.2%. That's phenomenal. All right, now let's talk about what's important, cash. How much cash does this property send my partner and I um, every year? And if you take take out the interest print payment as well, which is another $12,000, we're at $39,000. So it is $68,000 in net, net operating income, $16,800 in interest payments, and $12,000 in principal payments, which leaves us cash in the, in the count at the end of the year, $39,000. So what the most important metric in all of real estate is your cash on cash return because cash flows are king. We're not talking about appreciation. We're not talking about um, any, any other metric or any you know, tax advantages, nothing like that. We're talking about cash on cash returns. We put in $100,000 to buy this property and the very first year we're gonna make $39,000 in cash. That's a 39% cash on cash return. We are incredibly happy with that. That was the goal when we bought this property. That's why we like this property. And that's why we are going to go around and buy as many of these things as we can. Because here we have a little property that I visit once every three months and spend seven hours here. We have about two cars per day come in the front gate here. Um, all the rentals are online. 89% of our customers are on recurring revenue or recurring billing, meaning their car just gets billed automatically each time they sign up, um, you know, each time the, the rent is due. 
We don't have a ton of collections. We, we get maybe five or six customer service calls a week. So on top of our other six facilities, this is very, very low touch, this property, but it still looks great. Customers love it. We have a lot cheaper prices than the extra space storage up the, up the hill that spent $100 a square foot to, to buy to build their property. So this is, this is the name of the game for me. I like to buy little 66 units right here. We got 54 of them rented and we're at 80% occupancy and we're making really good money. We might even be able to rent a couple more units. We might actually do one more rent increase in uh, August where we raise the rent another $9 a month, a little bit closer to market rent because you can't find units, drive up units this cheap in, in the Pittsburgh metro area. So we're excited about the long-term value here. Just wanted to let you guys know what it's like to buy, own, operate a self-storage facility.